Today we're going to have a look at a Linux distribution that is resurrected from the grave. The last release was over 10 years ago, and now they are back with a live distribution that is designed to help you do multimedia stuff on a live distribution so that you do not have to install any extra software onto your computer. Thanks for checking out this video. And today we are gonna have a look at the return of Dynabolic. This is a multimedia live distribution. It is also endorsed by the Free Software Foundation. So if you're looking to stay in the entirely free zone, then this might be one you want to have a brief look at. Now it is designed to be a live distro. There's no explicit install on it. And uh, there are certainly a few things that I would point out. And uh, this is a, a beta release of it that we're having a look at. But hey, they wanted some thoughts and suggestions. And of course, I have a few of those. So of course, you can head of a look over at the Free Software Foundation. Um, and uh, they are uh, recommending Dynabolic. Now, this uh, it does say down here, it's a static distribution normally run from a live. Since it will not receive security updates, it should be used offline. I'm not completely sure if it's entirely supposed to be used offline, however. Uh, and the reason for that is because there is a lot of factors here involved in streaming. Uh, OBS is installed. Some radio applications are installed. There's basically a lot going on here meant for the internet. So it does raise a, a question, how frequently are we going to get updates? For example, Tails, which is explicitly designed as a, effectively an immutable live key, is updated routinely every six weeks. And I don't even know what the release is from when their three beta came out and their three came out if those were separate distributions and what their release schedule on four is going to be. So is this a serious distribution to take or not? That is a good question. But having a look over at their site, it says this is the free and live creative multimedia. Every page talks about we are hackers and they are also a activist group with, uh, I'm not sure, possibly more lefty type leanings. I'm not completely sure about that. Uh, but just based on their, uh, their statements down here, uh, which they push against capitalism and things. And in this case, I think they push against capitalism in more positive ways. And what I mean by that is that they are really pushing back against the excess of consumerism, which I agree is a serious problem in our modern era, the excessive consumerism that we find inside of the world. Of course, what this means is that they're talking in here uh, in their original guide about uh, reusing old computers, not making sure uh, things are being thrown away as much, just reusing stuff. But they also, in their marketing, make it sound as though this is the one distribution that can solve that, where in reality, nearly any Linux distribution can do this. Uh, so, of course, uh, if you see in here, we have just a lot. The Babylonian world, money is the vital necessity to make one's voice heard. Capitalism and idealistic, uh, I ideological, excuse me, governments rule the world using a monopoly on mass television, corporate social media to propagate their principles and suppress all criticism. Okay, I completely agree with all of that. All right, there we go. Uh, so... With Dynabolic, we break free from the exploitive operating systems, always demanding expensive hardware, giving us gratis players while requiring us to spend monies to make our share of our own creations. Now, of course, if you're doing a lot of video editing, you're going to need to have better stuff. Yes, this distribution has Caden Live and other video editing capabilities, but if you do not have the hardware capabilities to render a video, it's not going to be a good experience. I'm recording this on my Ryzen 5 laptop. I also have a i five laptop down here that would not work well for video editing. If I had an old cellular on processor laying around, I might be able to boot this up, but I am still not going to be able to, uh, to edit a video on it, for example, despite it has Caden Live pre-installed. So I'm going to push back a little bit to say that, that this one operating system is going to break free from all the expensive hardware because it does take beefier hardware to generate videos and things like that. So in here, they say 10 years have passed, and now they're coming back with Diabolic, uh, Dynabolic, excuse me, 4.0, which is based on Dev1.5. So if you're not familiar with Dev1, we've done a couple of reviews on Dev1. This is based on 
Debian and being based on Debian, it is um, uh, going to use, I think it uses sysent. It does not use system D. Dev1 pushes against system D. I think it uses sysv, if I remember, for the initialization. I could be wrong about that. Uh, but uh, they're also using KDE5. You say, why KDE5 when 6 was just released? Because it's based on Debian. It does not have KDE6 in it yet. I do not know if this is using Bookworm or if it is using um, uh, Bullseye. We will have a look at that. We'll have a look at the repos and see uh, what version we are working with. But what they have done that is slightly unique is inside of Plasma, they have created a button to produce different workspaces where you can switch between streaming, audio, video, graphics, and publishing. And it basically just gives you quick shortcuts to the applications involved in those elements. Of course, you can get to any of the applications for any of those methodologies just from the, the screen itself. So that's not a real big deal. Um, but they have given us a nice panel. So this is what highlights this, and we'll show you what this looks like. You basically click this button down here in the middle and then select this as the audio one. And now they did say these wallpapers are just here for the beta. They're going to re replace those with full regular wallpapers for their initial release. But their audio gives us these applications. The video gives us, you know, see Caden Live, VLC, and some other ones. And then graphics gives us GIMP, Inkscape, Darktable. Publishing gives us Scribus, a couple other ones. And then streaming is OBS, and uh, there's a radio streaming one. So that is what the distro is about. So from here, we're going to jump on over and have a look at the operating system itself running in GNOME boxes on this computer in virtualization. So we'll have a brief look at that. I'll highlight some of the things that I think are the greater positives and some of the, the possible negatives about it. And uh, then we'll come up and wrap up at the end. Okay, here we are on the main desktop. And the first thing you can spot is that the uh, screen resolution is not amazing. However, I was not able to find anything to adjust the screen resolutions. Uh, whether usually you'd find this with under like display and um, maybe you just look under your hardware display and monitor and you'll notice that we don't actually have anything to adjust to display. It seems to be missing from the uh, settings. So let's just go ahead and go for the old fashioned route. Let's do X Rand R dash S 1920 by 1080, and that should give us our screen resolution we want. Beautiful. All right, now we got a good full screen resolution. So that obviously was something that was missing. At least I wasn't able to find it. Down here we have Open Snitch. This is a nice application which allows you to basically monitor and provide explicit permissions for anything connecting to the internet. So if anything wants to connect to the internet, we are going to get a little pop-up up here just to illustrate what is going on. All right, let's see. Well, before I pull that up, let me let me see if I can find, uh, let's see, is Discover in here or not? Uh, so we don't have an easy way to install any software. Let's go ahead and have a brief look at um, uh, our repos. So I believe that should be under... Is it under Etsy apt, I think? And let's do sources list D. Uh, let's see. Let's do nano sources dot list. Oop. Oh, nano's not in here. Oh, Lord. Um, there we are. So we're just doing... Okay, so I do not remember if uh, if Didalius is from Bookworm or from Bullseye. I'll try and put a note on the screen here to uh, to uh, illustrate which one. So that'll be uh, that'll be it. All right, so there we are. Uh, sorry, we couldn't able to clarify that one out of the box. Let's just have a look, brief look at the rest of the software here. So under our development, we have Kate. Under our games, we have Blobby Volley. There's Extreme Tux Racer, Freegish, Technoballs, um, World War. Uh, is that World War Six? Great. Or Word War. Oh, I was thinking World War Six. Like already? Jeez. Uh, Dark Table. So uh, Dark Table, of course, is good if you're using a camera and you can set it to a raw camera mode. Dark Table actually works pretty nice. I've uh, played around with it before. Here's 
GIMP, Image Magic, Inkscape, Ocular, Scribus. Under Internet, we have NeoChat, which is a matrix client, Conqueror. And we have our connections to our phone, OpenStitch, Thunderbird. And then we have, uh, you can see a number of different things under multimedia. Of course, this is a multimedia distribution. Ardor, Audacity, but Ecomixer, uh, Envy. Now, one of the things that they had mentioned in their in their work is they're experimenting with Pipewire, which is interesting because the, um, I think the, I think it's this mixer here, uh, Explicit relies on Pulse Audio and Jack. And so it's, wondering how they're managing all that because those are some of the things that they do to fix the audio uh, and basically make it super professional. Things like AV Linux also have that stuff in, included as well. So it's curious to see how well that works. Here's our basic system monitor. So here's what is running right now. And of course, uh, we are, I think I gave this machine six gigs of RAM to use. So you can see right now it's only using one gig of RAM. So that's actually pretty good. And let's see if there's any other settings in there. So there's just, uh, uh, here's uh, Midnight Commander File Manager in addition to Dolphin File Manager. So we have a couple different file managers in here. We do have a web browser, which if you remember, uh, Free Software Foundation said it's offline, but there are certainly a lot of online components. So really the build about this system is you come down here and click on the start and it gives you the main activities over here and if you select one of these guys here it's just going to give you a new wallpaper and a new settings here for in this case Scribus and Ocular. So you can come over here and you can choose something else. So let's say graphics. We have Inkscape, GIMP, and Darktable. And under our audio you see we have our uh, Jamin, I think this is the one that actually requires pulse audio, I think. Let's see. So this one here, it's a jack audio maxing. So this requires jack. So I'm wondering if how well this is going to work under Pipewire. Uh, maybe it's rebuilt for it. Again, it's an application I don't know a ton about. But really what it's here for is that you can take any of your input and you can master it here on the software. I should look at possibly doing something like this. Uh, that'd actually be a fun thing to do. Here is um, your jack control. We have our door here. So, of course, this is uh, one of the applications. This and LMMS are, are very similar applications for um, doing, um, doing music production. We have Audacity. We have Kid 3, which is my... Uh, is that Kid 3? Should be, yeah. Uh, this is my preferred audio tagger. I have videos about that. Sound converter. And uh, what's this one here? This one's Mix. All right, so we have a number of uh, a number of different tools. Of course, you can come in here and you can choose any other application. These are just a, a quick way to get them all uh, set up in one location. So here's your video stuff. Here's your video editor. And then we have uh, HashiCam. I did not able to get that to boot ever, so I'm not sure what that one is doing. And here's under your streaming options. We have our OBS. We have our VLC. We have our butt streaming tool. I've never seen butt before. So one of the things I did look at is some of the versions of the software are a little bit older. So Kden Live 22, uh, which is two years old at this point in time. And uh, OBS is version, I believe it's 28, which is also two years old at this point in time. Now you'll notice there, Snitch, oh, OBS tried to get onto the internet. Do you want to allow it or do you deny it? Uh, we'll just go ahead and allow it. We're going to go ahead and cancel this. You'll, oh, we're on OBS 29, which I think is still about a year and a half to two years old. Again, I don't know if that's because it's basing on an older version of Debian or the newer version of Debian slash Dev1 do not have the newer packages. Not quite sure, but we are getting a couple older packages in here. And so you might need to determine is that what you want or not. I personally wouldn't care uh, because I... What I like about this system is I do not like my system changing a lot. And so for me to say, hey, install this system and it's not going to change at all and you can just keep using it, that is a big uh, victory point for me because I do not like it when software updates and then they move a bunch of stuff around and because I just don't want a brand new version just because I pushed the upgrades on my computer uh, 
inside of this individual version. That in absolutely is a matter of personal preference. I just don't want to mess with that because I don't want to mess with something changing in my software. That's personally where I'm at. And again, down here, the open snitch is an excellent application, uh, which will allow us to really do a lot of detailed control over what is going on with the internet. And so for this reason, this does accomplish being a, a good uh, set up of multimedia applications. It gives you a chance to play around with things like the, the JAMIN and the uh, HDSV um, mixer and other applications that you can play around with it and then decide if you want to install those on your system. But on the opposite side, it is, it, it it's a weird to me because it's a live system that's not going to update the software much at all. And it is still meaning to go on the internet. And things like OBS, you do not want OBS on a live key because you're going to have to go in here and just do tons of settings every time. I mean, I would lose half a day's of production if my entire OBS system crashed and my backups were corrupted and I couldn't re-import all my OBS settings. So... In theory, you could go in and you could import some OBS settings. So you could export it to an encrypted, uh, an encrypted drive, and then re-import it in. I think you can in input settings. I can't remember for sure. Uh, I know that what I can do is I can. They, yeah, there you go. So we can import profiles. So if you were to set up your OBS, export to a profile, then every single time you turn the system on, you want to import your profile. That might get a little bit annoying. Uh, Kden Live offers you the same option. My Kden Live is highly customized at this point in time. I have a lot of shortcuts. I have a lot of extra scenes created. I have a lot of transitions already developed, things that make my video production run faster. If I had to go back and redo those every single time or even input a file every single time, it'd be a little odd. So these applications, I, I just don't see these as necessarily good applications for uh, good candidacy for a live distribution necessarily. But I can see the use for it in some instances. Um, so I did want to see, so there their encryption software is actually not on here by default too, although they talk about it in their documentation. So there is my brief look over at uh, Dynabolic. So let me know if this is a type of uh, distribution you'd use or not use. Also for activism, there's no office suite. I don't know. It's, it seems like there's some things missing for, for me personally. Uh, let me know what you think about this. And of course, uh, if you're new to the project, go have a look at their page, see if it's something that you are into. Uh, so I'll leave a link for that in the description and let's go ahead and wrap up the video shortly. So there is our look at Dynabolic, the distribution. So, uh, of course, number one, if you are new to the project, go check it out. And if you are uh, interested in what they're doing, definitely help support them in their project. And hopefully with this video, we can raise awareness that uh, what they're doing and and uh, what they're uh, bringing out. Uh, and otherwise, is this a distribution I'm going to use on a regular basis? Personally, not, because all of the applications, you can install anything that this is doing on any other Linux distribution. And sometimes, in many instances, get a much better experience, especially doing video production in this. You need to keep your source files around, and that becomes really hard on a live uh, setup. But that being said, there are good, real, compelling reasons to do this, especially lined up with, uh, look, on their website, they have a Tome application, um, which basically is a, uh, a free software foundation uh, endorsed encryption platform. So you can literally build an encrypted on half of your drive and run the live key on the other half and save your files over there. All that's feasibly possible as well. So there are certainly good reasons for this to have a good portable distribution. You can plug in any computer and certainly it achieves their goal of being a free distribution for activism. And I do love the uh, fact that they have snitch making sure that nothing connects to the internet without your explicit consent. So there's my thoughts on this distribution and uh, uh, subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so leave a comment and we will see you in the next video.